Today's video is going to be based about breaking down a game play in the NFL 16 Draft Champions rank. So, guys, a little bit of an introduction to my, to my channel here. My name is Cody, and this channel really exists to make you better at my NFL 16. And I try to do that through a variety of different types of content. But today's video specifically is going to be discussing our Draft Champions series, and we're taking a look at a full gameplay. So, the last two videos have kind of been about roster development and how to go about how I went about drawing my team and showed you how to kind of, uh, you know, kind of organize your personnel. And today's video is going to be all about gameplay. We're taking a look here, and we're just going to play a straight up head-to-head online match, and uh, we're looking at this. So. The thing that I like about Draft Champions is the fact that it's really kind of tournament style because you, it's, it's it's really even. Like, it's almost like your team is like, because you, everyone has the same kind of opportunity. Now, yes, some people have better drafts than others, but, you know, in the big picture of things, you know, this actually is a really good opportunity, and, and I really enjoy it. So, uh, anyway, we're hopping in here. So, I'm going to this mix playbook, and the reason for that is because... I'm in the, um, real quick, if you guys don't, if you didn't watch the portion of the videos, uh, I'm running the Minnesota, yeah, I'm running Minnesota's playbook, and uh, I really like the nickel Y9 uh, from this, and uh, we're going to be utilizing a lot of nickel today, and we're going to be user controlling Bud Dupree, uh, you're going to see a lot of cover to me. Uh, what I do is is run cover two man just to kind of start up the game. Just basic, very simple. If you can beat it, you can beat it, but, you know, nothing else. And then also, I like to use the play wide receiver mechanic, especially when I'm in draft champions, because some guys can have those legend receivers out there matched up on your silver corners, and that's never good for anybody, right? So first possession already starting out. We got the stop. We just want some basic cover two man. Offensively, I'm really excited because the Minnesota Vikings play because I've actually been kind of going in and out of because I really, I really like a couple of specific plays from it, and uh, and here we go. So I got Rod Woodson, the legend. I've never used him in before, but we're gonna see how he does for us today uh, in Draft Champions. So the cool part about the Minnesota playbook is they have the I form uh, twins tight end formation now. This team really isn't built to run the ball, unfortunately, but uh, it actually does have that opportunity with some of the adjustments we can make to the lineup and things of that nature. We can actually create this thing uh, to where we can uh, do some damage running the ball with some of the zone runs and things in the Minnesota playbook uh, that's going to help us. So just going to start out really basic here, going I form twins. I really like the, the zone plays because you can double juke in the backfield and kind of reverse feel like that, get your hips turned. It's just a really good way to kind of start the game out, in my opinion. Uh, move from there, and we're going to get out of the come into the shotgun sets because we actually have a really good team for uh, some shotgun sets, so we're going to kind of organize it that way. And like I said, Jordan Reed is going to be kind of one of my most important players. I'm going to put Ladarius on the outside because he's got probably the most speed. And then I've got Alshon Jeffrey and Jordan Matthews. Uh, so here, as you can see, you know, the clock running down. I'm going to take a timeout. And the reason I'm going to do that is because in draft champions, especially in the first quarter, it's really, really important that you don't waste your timeout. Or excuse me, don't waste your timeouts. It's really important that you do take timeouts. Uh, when making situational adjustments and things like that. Now, the cool part about this Minnesota playbook is this this formation uh, is really good for man-to-man -man and quick passes and things of that nature. Now, the key to the the key the large big picture spectrum key to draft champions is the ability to get in get in and out of a game, right? So basically, what I mean by that is you have to be able to manufacture wins, and it makes you sound kind of lame and like a manager but you really truly do have to be able to do that you don't want to ever come into this game and just expect that you're going to just you know, be incredible right out of the gate it's really really important that you just manufacture some wins so run some inside zone some read option things of that nature and just run basic things because you're going to find that a lot of people uh, are going to be able to do a lot of different things and if you're not able to if you're not able to, to you know to legit move drive the ball up and down the field you're basically trying to manufacture about 21 points in my opinion if you can get about 21 points in a draft champions game 
uh, you'll be able to, you'll be just fine, and, and you'll be able to, to get there with a win. So it takes about seven seconds. So we're gonna see if we can get this snap without having to burn another timeout, and we're not going to. So I'm gonna have to take a delay game. And you're gonna see. I mean, this is a big deal because, like right here, I was in field goal range. Now I'm out field goal range. And now I kind of have to worry about making sure that I get into field goal range uh, on this next on this next play. So you know, it's always good to understand your you know what you have. And the cool part about this trips tight formation, what I really like about it, is the ability to really do some cool things with motion. And uh, and you'll see that. So this guy sends a pressure, and now look at this. I'm out of field goal range. You know, I'm out of field goal range because of the pressure. He's going to run basic pressure just like, like everybody does. does. You know, a lot, a lot of people, people like to utilize pressure, uh, uh, you know, to do some things in draft champions. And, you know, this is definitely no different. So there I, compl I clearly threw the football, but unfortunately we weren't able to get the ball off. And he's going to get the ball back here. So we're going to have to punt it and see what we can do. Try to cough and corner him. We got a pretty decent punter, Allen. And he's got Ted Ginn. We're going to kind of try to clear that lane out by going for the big hit with Ferrey. And defensively, uh, we the cool part about Minnesota's play, because we got this 4-3 wide nine. Now, the cool part about the 4-3 wide nine, in my opinion, is that it's really, really set up for a team like mine who has really, you know, really decent play. It's just a really good formation for a 3 wide 9 and If you guys don't, you might consider it. It's really, really good for stopping, like, inside zone and things like that. Um, you know, there's not a ton of things you can do. I mean, there's always things you can do to get pressure from this, but the key is that it's really good at stopping the run and just kind of playing some basic ball. And there you see Rod Woodson come up with an interception, and the strength of that two-man under uh, comes back here. All right, so don't want to waste anything here. I want to go right into the I-form type pair and try to run some of this Viking power and Vikings, uh, yeah, this Vikings power. Oh, it's actually a really good little run play. And here we're going to playmaker it. Or, oh, crap, I forgot you can't playmaker this run. He goes offside, so that was luck, but we just quick snapped it and we're able to get it. We don't have our guy okay. in here, our run blockers. So what I like to do here is I like to sub in, uh, I like to sub in a tackle. So this guy Moses, and then we're gonna put Pasco out there. I like to put Darius Green in there, there. and then yeah, you know, Alshon Jeffrey on the outside. And what we like to do is use this Vikings power. It's a really, really good play. I've had a lot of success with it in the past. I've been wanting to try it out against some of these guys. It's just a really interesting little run. This superstar. Uh, I think that's the Justin Tuck. He's just blown up every play that I've called. Uh, he's been in the backfield almost every play. All right, so in this situation, we're going to go back to the that trips tight end. And I think we'll take it to the quarter. So the key now in this situation is to score three points, right? I only want three. I don't want anything else because the bottom line is like yeah obviously we, we want we all want six points but the key is if I score three then I'm gonna be you know it's gonna set me up really really nicely to be able to um, it's gonna set me up really nicely if you know because I'm gonna have a one possession lead and I'm also going to be able to um, I'm trying to freaking remember where that formation was. See, the thing about draft champions is your play quality is shorter, too. So that definitely matters. It's wide trips, maybe? I don't freaking know. So, uh, but the thing is, for me, you want to score, uh, you know, you want to basically just go into halftime with a one possession lead. That's the key for me. If I go into halftime with a one possession lead, I feel confident in my ability to win. Uh, if I go into halftime tied or down, I don't feel very confident. So, like, for example, this Golden's Twins is a really powerful formation in draft champions. Not so much in real, but, but in draft champions it is because they're going to hold their blocks more. You know, they're going to, and they're they're not just going to hold their blocks more. They're actually, and that's why I really like, like, these, this trips tight end, and I really like this inside zone. 
with with backs like Bobby Ray because what it basically boils down to is it's a read. If they press cover me, I'm going inside zone almost nine times out of ten. If they go off coverage, so I can see here he's off coverage, then I will chew out. So, for example, I'll go into something else. So maybe go PA, maybe go verticals, you know, whatever that would be. So I'm going to try to do a little slip to the back. He goes with a little man blitz. We're going to go ahead and get six. It's always important to get six when you can. And here we're able to take advantage and get uh, a touchdown. Now, the cool part about the Minnesota Vikings play, they have this single back bunch ace. And I've actually been working on a play. They have this divide play from the bunch, which is really good. They also have FL drive. But the one that they have is important is they have the quick pitch. And uh, I really think that this is one of the better plays in the entire game. We're going to have to go ahead and take a T.O. But the quick pitch is very hard to stop. Uh, at least in my experience with it. And so we're going to just go with a quick pitch. Very simple. If he gives us the read, go to spacing or the inside zone. If he tries to base the line. So you see here he does base the line. So it's an easy read for me. Check right down to that inside zone. And you see we're going to hold our blocks. And Bobby Rainey is going to get in for sick or for that two-point conversion. Why do I go for two-point conversions? I want to make a quick argument as to why you should always go for two-point conversions when you score first. Not when you score second, but when you score first. Here's why, especially early on in the game. If I can get up eight points, that forces you to have to go to at least at some point in your scoring spree. So, you know, if we kind of trade back and forth, trade back and forth, and eventually you have to go – for uh, you have no choice, right? You have to go for that two-point conversion. At that point, I feel confident uh, in my ability for my defense to play good red zone defense and also um, not just for my defense to play good red zone defense, but I also feel very confident in the fact that if you miss the two-point conversion, right, if you miss the two-point conversion, then you're down, you're still down on possession. It's, it's possession, not necessarily you're only down one. You're down a possession, and a possession is huge. Possession differential is what makes or breaks the game. So this guy is not really making me kind of respect anything that he's doing. Um, so what I'm going to do right now, because he hasn't really ran the ball very much, so this is pretty simple for me. I'm just going dime two man. He hasn't shown me that he can beat two man under, so I like to go to dime. Uh, it's that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outsides is what I'm looking for. And that's why we're going to go to it. You know, I mean, yeah, he'll blitz and things and do that game. But, you know, for the most part, you know, this is going to be a fairly solid uh, little strategy here is to use the dime defense. The idea is that everyone gets there. Everyone gets there. Um... There's there it is. There's man coverage, and that was on that was on one of his like legend cards, right? That was I think that was Jeremy Mack, and they get a good double juke, and Ronald Darby's gonna go for a pick six, and we're looking pretty solid right now, guys. Don't ever 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 underestimate the power of two man under in this game. This game is built on two man under. Two man under is the key defense to play. If you cannot beat two man under. You will not win a game this season. I promise you that. If you cannot beat two men in consistently, then I will literally run it, run it, and run it, run it some more. There we get in for two points again. Now, the second time you want to go for two, it, in my opinion, it just makes even more sense. Because if you make that eight point and then you can get that 16 point spread, even if you miss the two, two point conversion, right, they're still going, they're going to kick field goals because they're playing from behind and they have to play that smart play of kicking a field goal. So it's two field goals, seven, seven. Or you could go to that eight six, which is going to mean that you know you you get the first two point conversion, you miss the second one, you're still at that fourteen point spread. I hope that makes a little sense, and uh, you know sometimes I don't know that I'd make a ton of sense. So here's a little slip screen to the back. We're just going to come over top here, contain everything. At this point, we're playing pretty much contain defense. If we can hold him to three points, that's really all we're trying to do. So basically, what we're saying is no big plays. You can scramble, you can have everything underneath, but no big plays. You can run slip screens, that's okay. You know, we're just going to kind of come over the top here, nothing, 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 force him to be tackled. Now, what you're going to see me do now is if he runs that slip screen again, uh, he's going to get uh, you know, taken out because we're going to make a little lift here. We're going to him up that guy. Now we have flow cover. He goes to on the scramble. 
And, and, and he's going to make a huge play. The one thing we do want to happen. And he gets in for six. That's that's kind of tough. So right there, that's just honestly, that's a mistake on my part. Um, he ran that slip screen, slip, slip screen. I knew it was coming. I knew he was just flipping to the wide side of the field. And I just missed three tackles. I mean, it really just boils down to the fact that I missed three tackles right there. You can't miss tackles if you expect to be successful in this game. I should have just come out quarter. Uh, gun quarter three deep, man up three deep, contain rush. Would have been fine. Uh, I think, personally, to be quite honest with you, I didn't realize he had Michael Vick at quarterback. He had been playing for two quarters now. I didn't realize he had Michael Vick. I didn't realize he could scramble. He ended up making me pay there. So that's why it's always important, number one, to know your personnel, but also to realize the other guy's personnel. What is his strengths? What is his weaknesses? You know, how can you build your team to really take advantage of that? All right, so here we go offensively. And we're going to go to the shotgun empty bunch. This is the formation I like to go to uh, when I'm trying to get the ball down the field quick. And the play that I really like is this play bunch out. I think it's really the, the, the key play for me uh, this season. And it was something I used last year, and it's something I used this year. So uh, I really like it. I want to do a little uh, free – I want to do a free scheme on it because it's really, really good. I, I kind of thought about writing an ebook on it, to be quite honest. I probably will because I've used it for the last two years. And uh, I never thought – you know, I don't know why I never thought. I mean, I, I always thought to, but I just never did. Never wrote an ebook on it. So when they come out off coverage like this, your first read is to the left side of the field. So here we look, and we're able to hit this check down read. Jeffrey. And you see, with a, and that's why for me it's so important to get that quarterback. If I can get that Drew Brees quarterback, you know, I always feel confident in my offense and its ability, you know, to move the ball down quick. I almost threw a pick right there. Uh, but I, knew, I do need to make some adjustments to the formation, that's for sure. Uh, what you want to do, the cool part about this, is we can go to the full package, I think. No. I can't change Bobby Rainey, can I? Oh, that sucks. See, that's why it's important. I feel like the halfback is one of the most important positions. Like the quarterback and the halfback. If you have a good quarterback and a good halfback, you're going to be set. We just couldn't. We got nothing. We had. We really didn't get very many options. And our quarterback and halfback came on the same one. Here he blitzes me so I can get that quick flat route. Bobby Rainey in the flat. Get in for six. That's why you use the dive. Don't hesitate to dive in this first game. You don't fumble. You do not fumble when you dive. I'm truly, 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 truly thinking honest and telling you, if you dive, you won't fumble the ball. Personally, that's what I've seen now. Is that 100%? I don't know. Now here, I'm going to take a timeout. Now here's one. Take a timeout. What it's going to do is it's going to get Bobby Rainey back in the game. I don't have another running back. I only have one. I don't really need the timeout because I'm only, you know, I, I, I still have that two pitch and cushion. And, and, you know, so, so right here, get Bobby Rainey back in the game. Go for two. Right? Go for two. And you're going to go up 24 to 7. What's 24 to 7 mean? It means if you go 7 7 7, that's 21. Right? And that's 21. That means that has to take a field that's a, It makes this a three possession game. That's why you go for two right here. So here, Bobby Rainey, and he's going to get caught. And that's okay because it's still it's still a two possession game, right? If I kick a field goal, I'm up two possessions. If I if I if I go for two, I get the possibility of being up three. So just a little game management type thing. And I've actually been doing this in all of my games, and I've been actually having a lot of success with it. All right, so 18 seconds left on the clock. We're going to go to this 46 package, and we're going to use this speed package. And what we're going to do here is we're going to call uh, this play inside blitz. Now, here's why. The inside blitz is a really unique type of pass rush because it really always is going to get in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go man bump on the outside. I'm going to use her, uh, not Rod Woodson. I didn't want to use a Rod Woodson. Dang it. And he picked it up. Of course he did. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use her that Sean Williams. Um, so we have the speed package. We have Varey here. We got Wilson here, and then we've got Sean Williams here. And we're going to use her control Sean Williams. He goes to the Wildcat here. So here we are, just spreading out. Just contain, just contain. That's all you do, and you get to half. Uh, right here, that's the key. The reason I go inside that blitz instead of man up 3D, especially in this scenario, is because I feel like I'm confident in my corners because I got really good corners, right? So I can go cover zero, 
as long as I use her that safety and the inside blitz is that kind of blitz where it's coming in, you know, it's coming in whether you like it or not. So, you know, I still have that one safety over top type of feel here and see there and it still gets you kind of up in his face. Uh, so now this is even more important to go inside blitz because, well, now with the three seconds, I'm going to check down to the dime here. We're going to go DB blitz. So we're sending six. And basically, you see, this is just kind of prevent style. So six, the reason I do that is because it doesn't give the receivers time. They're pressed. They're not getting off the bump, if you see what I'm saying. And, and now I have the ball. Now I have the ball. I have the opportunity to really control the game. In my opinion, prevent defense this season, especially in those situations where they have three timeouts in 23 seconds, you go, man, blitz. You don't sit back and, and cover four, cover sixes. And there you see Rod Woodson, you pick up a legend. Rod Woodson starts off the second half with a bang and gets us the ball all the way to the 35-yard line. Here we're in scoring position. So, again, back to the game management proposition. We want to be up three possessions. That's the goal by the end of this drive, right? Whether we score a field goal or a touchdown, we want to be up three possessions. So, as you can see here, we're in that type of scenario where we just want to check down to the bunch ace. And the reason for that is because I personally feel very comfortable in the bunch of ace. You can pass out of it, but you more importantly, you have a really good running system, especially to that right side of the screen uh, with the way that you have your lips set. And uh, as you can see, we're going to be able to check it down here. We're just going to run the ball. Uh, at this point in the game, we're really just going to run the ball. The reason we're going to do that is we have the uh, we have the situational advantage. We have the possessions in our, in our favor. The other thing is because we don't want to affect it. We don't want turnovers. We don't want big plays because the game goes so freaking fast. Um, it, it goes so fast. So that's that's why we're choosing to do this. And here, that's kind of that thing with Bobby Rainey. That's why you need that really quick back is because Bobby Rainey just doesn't have that speed. But run the ball three times, we'll take a field goal, right? We'll take a field goal. We're fine with taking field goals at this point in the game. You know, if this was earlier on in the game, you know, probably not so much. But because we're late in the game, we can take field goals and be okay. And we're going to go with that double juke, that bunch, and we're going to be able to get out here. And now we'll take a field goal. Very simple. We've got the two clock mechanic on. We're going to run the clock all the way down, force him to use it, start using his time. It's, it's really just one of these things. Like Carolina, and it's like the game against Carolina and Seattle. It becomes a game against the clock, especially in Mutt Ultimate or in uh, in Draft Champions, because the game is so sped up because of the play clock. And we just embarrassed ourselves on national live internet. We missed a kick. That's a big miss. That's a big miss, you know. Never want to boil games down to one thing, but, I mean, that's a terrible miss right there. So we have Jason Ray on the field. We're in our nickel wide nine now. And we're just going to – he hasn't beat two Mander yet. Right? He has not beat it yet. So we're just going to pin our ears back, rush the passer. Play wide receiver mechanic is on, and we're there. As you see, he's going 3 of 10 for like a buck. So the thing is, this is the other thing. Guys, I understand, like, pressure is sexy. But when you're playing a, a locked-up head-to-head battle, you don't want to blitz every game, every down. Now, some guys, they'll blitz every single down. Um... In my personal opinion, you don't want to do that. Even the greatest players, like Problem and Serious Mo, they play coverage defense. They play coverage defense, and, they, and, and, and it works, especially in this year's game. I think coverage defense, and what I mean by coverage defense is when you don't blitz, right? And this is just base rushes. This is just four-man base rushes. And so you keep Vic in the pocket. We need to start spying somebody. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. I think I've been talking and been lazy. We've got to start spying somebody. When you're facing a mobile quarterback like Vic, um, the key is to have that quarterback spy. Now, we know that Harrison and Nick are kind of slow, right? So we're going to sub in Lawson with that 86 speed, put him at that um, – pass rushing position and then move Carradine to the quarterback spot because these guys can keep up with Michael Vick. And uh, he runs the ball. He's an idiot. He has to throw it. He's down two scores, right? Here he runs. 
and we're just keeping him, keeping him in bounds. Keep that clock turning. That's the key. It, 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 honestly, I don't really care if he scores on me. I just, just care that I keep the clock moving. That's pretty much it. Safeties are deep. Quarterback spy is there. And see, there's the contain. And there we are. The pass rush comes in. And now we're in a really good position. So I want Tank Carradine pass rushing. I want um, I want Victor Butler pass. My best pass rusher is on the field. Um, and we're in a we're in a best set right here. So we're gonna just call timeout. Okay. In, in the second half, you know, it's a little bit it's a little bit more important to save them. But we just didn't have our, our right players on the field. We got a little mixed up with situational subs. And um, we're still having some issues. Tank Carradine here. And we're just going to have to go with this lineup. I, I'm some reason I'm still in 4-3 over. I don't want to be in this defense at all. We get lucky that he chooses to check down to a running play. Sometimes Madden... Uh, will really screw with your mind, in my opinion, because it'll force you to come out in formations you don't want to if you don't pick your play on time. That's why, for my money, it is it is so 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 important to make sure that you pick your play right. You know, make sure that you pick your play. All right, so here we are, two man under, nickel wide nine. We got that quarterback spy out there. And he completes a really, really, really weird-looking pass for the touchdown. So a good play by him there. Uh, offensively, the key right now is just be consistent. We're just going to try to shorten the game. Uh, I'm not no longer my comfortable with three runs and a punt. Um, so we're gonna you're gonna see a little mm -hmm. more of you know a balanced offense. And Rods Wood, Woodson just freaking fumbled that ball. See, that's how quickly you can all of a sudden, like, have total control of the game and then just not. All right, so now this is where we need to start going back. Uh, uh, so we're going to come, come into this 4-3 wide nine. nine. Now, what I, I like out of the 4-3 wide nine is the cover one defense, defense uh, especially for this team because I can press it. Right. right. And, uh, here we are. There's those wide not. nines containing, and we're going to contain yep. those running plays. Keep that underneath. He's got that Theo Riddick card. It was a really, really nice card. I love that card. Great pickup by him. And he's going to go with that counter again. Powering. We're going to go to this. Um, we're going to actually a quick adjustment. We're going to sub in uh, for this red zone scenario. And we're going to leave it as is. But we're going to go cover two and invert instead of uh, the other one. And we're just going to kind of bring these guys down hardcore. And see what we can do. A little read option. There's a fumble from Michael Vick. Harrison picks it up. We're going to pitch that back because Bud Dupree has 91 speed and there was nobody in the vicinity. Damon Harrison probably would have got caught. But because we pitched it back to Bud Dupree by hitting L1, we're able to go in for six. And that's a huge Huge touchdown for the defense. Huge touchdown. I think that's two defensive touchdowns on the day. Uh, as you can see, guys, the Minnesota Vikings playbook, not a whole lot of pressure, right? Not a whole lot of pressure from us. And honestly, you don't need a lot of pressure in this game. In this specific season of Madden, I believe you don't need a ton of pressure to be effective. You just need to be calling the right plays using those four down linemen rushes. And it really, that's what matters mainly. Okay, that's what matters mainly. Now, it's not the only thing. You do need to have the ability to send pressure. If they're just able, you know, if they're just able to kind of sit back and pick it apart and, you know, kind of easy peasy, lemon squeezy type deal, then yes, you need to be able to send that pressure. But it's not the only thing that matters. So many other things go into it. And you see these YouTube guys who put all their energy into good pressure schemes. They don't have run defense. You have to have all of it. It's all inclusive. So here we are, nickel wide nine, and you're going to see cover two man probably the rest of the game. Probably the rest of the game. We're, we're going to be use. using a spy for Vic, and we're just going to say we're going to pass commit to, you know, no big plays. He has to double juke back into us. 
he's actually got a really good lineup offensively too. And you're seeing, you know, kind of. And here we're going to take Arthur Jones out, and we're going to put, make sure that Manny Lawson is is going to be in. And uh, I had hoped to get Victor Butler at. We're just going to do it though. We're going to we're going to spy that R O S D N Butler, and we're just going to use her Dupree. So there's that flat. We'll give that up. There's a little slip screen to the back. Woodyard fights through. Makes a really nice play ball. I'm going to go with this cover one hole. Let's see what we can do. There's another screen. I'll tell you what, man coverage does a decent job against screens. So we don't have to worry about that either. So right here, fourth and five. This is one of those situations where you can really end the game. You know, so we're gonna just kind of set this up what is normal, but we're gonna go with a little zone blitz here. See if we can't get it going. Get that pressure in. That's the first time I think we sent a blitz all game. Ends up paying off for us. He wasn't expecting the pressure. We're able to get it, seal the game here. And right here, definitely compliment or definitely, definitely. confident at this point. We're gonna be able to run that clock out. Like to sub in that Mike uh, or Matt Asiata, and we're going to utilize the uh, single back bunch ace. He's got three timeouts. He's got the ability to stop the clock, but he's down two possessions. Um, you know, so right here, you got to at least get the clock rolling. You know, so we're going to do that here. A couple, you know, always be ability to fake your playmaker. See if he's going to commit somewhere. He doesn't. Asiata's got really, really good trucking. I don't know if you guys know that or not, and he really is a really good late game back to bring in. Mm -hmm. See that two-minute warning is going to stop the clock for him, but we're going to be able to take it to that two-minute warning. And right here, guys, it really is as simple as three runs and a field goal because you go up three possessions, and there's no possible way he can score three times, you know, for the most part. Double juke back to the inside here, very simple. Get those positive yards. Uh, right here, with this situation... We're going to sub in uh, our speed guy, Marquis Goodwin, on the outside. And we're going to take a look here and see if we can't maybe get an end around. Because this is one of the most unexpected play calls in this scenario. Right? He's expecting the inside zone, a quick pitch right. And uh, so we're just going to, you know, do that here. Show him that we're going to be doing basic stuff over and over again. Now we get the end around. And we got that 95 speed. And we're going to get that. That's really close to a first down. And if we're fourth in inches, we go for this. Yeah, we'll go for this. The reason we go for this, guys, I'm telling you what, not very many people can stop quarterback sneak, especially if you do this. Come out of the huddle, quick snap it, and you're going to flip the play. The reason you flip the play is they're going to set up to stop it to the right side. You flip it, quick snap it, and you've got yourself a first down and pretty much going to wrap up the victory. From here, I quarterback sneak three times. Quarterback sneak three times because quarterback sneak is going to get you about a yard or two, especially if they're not expecting it. Especially if they're expecting toss or fullback dive, quarterback sneak's going to do you good for about a yard or two. Here you see we're going to get two yards. That's a huge time, huge time win, in uh, in my opinion. Two yards, just a simple little play for two yards, easy money, and you can fake with your playmakers and things like that. But normally, you know, you're just going to fall forward, and as you can see here, fall forward again for another three yards, and we're going to do the same thing, run that clock. He'll probably get maybe one possession, uh, but he won't get two easy calls. Here. We're going to have to take a timeout because we didn't like the look. And if you ever don't like the look, especially in situations like that where your quarterback's handling the football and you know, you're playing a clock game, but you're also playing a field possession game and that kind of thing, it's very simple for me. It's almost as simple as this, call that timeout. Especially when you're up. Especially when you're up. Never be afraid to call those timeouts, guys. All right, so here, Bobby Rainey, you're expecting a run commit. So we're going to try and see if we can't hit the pitch to the left side. we got that one-on-one. -on -one. Rainey with that double juke back to the inside. He's going to get in for six. That'll do it. It's going to seal the game, guys. Uh, in this situation, show some respect for your opponent. Take a field goal. In my opinion, that's what you do. So we show respect. We take that field goal. And we're going to do the same thing on defense. Nickel wide nine, two men under. 
Use for that middle linebacker. I've never seen anyone beat it for more than 20 yards. Never seen anyone beat it for more than 20 yards. And the pass rush is freaking great from it, too. Another another defense you might consider is the nickel two four five double A gap too, or the double A gap, uh, because what it does it's going to put, uh, you know, it's going to put you in an interesting scenario, because I can get Victor Butler here. Don't know what Manny Lawson is. I uh, will call a timeout. We'll call a timeout. Never afraid to call timeout, guys. I'm telling you, you've seen it over and over again. There's been multiple times we've been in bad situations. We call that timeout. And, you know, we're just fine. It's kind of a laggy game. But anyway, nickel pad nine, two man under. Make sure you got your spy. I'm going to manually press here. Take that away. Take that away. Get inside. Get inside. Get inside. The quarterback spy, I think we didn't pass commit. So, especially when you're in this situation, always pass commit. Reason being... Right, so they're going to go verticals. you got to believe. The only thing that really beats verticals is that tight end route or some playmaker and things. So we'll click down that right stick, bring that spy, force him to throw to the running back. As you can see, he's only going to get two yards. Nothing lost there. Same setup. We're going to send three. Have a spy. Not covering the running back on this play. Over in deep middle. My responsibility in Tampa to cover, to cover two principles is to get this deep middle. He rolls out with Vic. We click down on that spy. We're going to get a sack. And they're going to close the game out with a bang. So, guys, that was a good game. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. And uh, if you want to see more Draft Champions combat, com, uh, our content, be sure to subscribe below. If you want to see some other stuff, maybe this video wasn't helpful to you at all, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know what's going to help you guys. And lastly, guys, if you want to check out kind of my thoughts on offense and defense, I've got, two def I've got several guides in the description. You can check out those guides. They're very reasonably priced. They're full videos.